So guys, recently a new terrorist group actually, you know, came up in the northern part of the country. And you know, when we speak of this regional form of government, a lot of you guys might not really understand what we are saying and why we are speaking much about this regional form of government. That most of these northern leaders have abandoned their primary responsibilities in the northern part of the country in securing the areas rather they are more dependent that because they, they know at the end of the day, the federal government, you know, will come together for their rescue, you know, uh, bring out money, bring out uh, our common resources to, you know, uh, our security uh, uh, vote and every other thing and security you know, money for the northern part of the country. And they've intentionally refused to fight, even to the extent that many of them have come out to even accuse themselves. Remember when the governor, the current governor of Zamfara State, came out and said that the current minister of defense, being uh, Matawale, is involved in banditry and, you know, said a lot of things. The minister came out and said it's a lie. It, and this points out towards one thing, that the banditry and the insecurity and the terrorism in the northern part of the country is being sponsored by some political elites in that particular area, areas and some leaders in the northern part of the country. That is why when you speak of regional form of government, they don't want it because some, to, to some of them, I'm going to show you what happened today and why this uh, new militant group, uh, their names and the actions they started uh, uh, doing again, they've actually taken over a lot of local governments in the northern part of the country. And they are watching this thing growing day by day and day by day and day by day because they believe, as a matter of fact, that the federal government and everybody, every other person will rally together and come together and you know, start fighting against this terrorism. Meanwhile, they know how to stop this particular uh, insecurity in the northern part of the country. You know, when I said let us return back to regional government, it is for the benefit of some northerners because they will not know that they, they are they are solely responsible for whatever that is actually happening in their region. The westerners, the easterners, the Igbos, the Yorubas, the Aosas will know that in your region you are solely responsible and they will tackle it head on. They will tackle it head on because a lot of people are saying that the, the new terrorist group and probably the new group we have in the northern part of the country is a political group that they want to use it to destabilize parliament tribal governments and parliament tribal will not succeed in 2027. Some people started saying that this was the same thing they did with Boko Haram and all that, you know, these conspiracy theories and all that. Meanwhile, let me show you what recently happened today because, you know, when we speak of regional government, soon a lot of people understand why we need this regional form of government so that people will sit up. Most of these northern senators and northern governors and northern politicians have actually, you know, relaxed. They don't want to, you know, provide a very safe and secure environment for themselves so that they will attract foreign investors and uh, attract a lot of good things within their region. As you can see on the screen, that the new terrorist group, the name of the te terrorist group being is uh, Lakura, Lakurawa, you know, uh, by about 50, 15 KB residents, or also a large number of cattle. Now, the, the question is, what is these people actually fighting for? What is their ideology and what is actually happening? Why is this new terrorist group coming out? Now, let me show you as you can see on the screen, proper context, as you can see on the screen, these people say something that... Um, so they said that uh, at least 15 persons have been buried by the new jihad jihadist group, Lakurawa, have been buried in KB state. You could imagine 15 persons already. That the state deputy governor, Omar Abubakar, you know, uh, Tafida, and Emir of Agungu, you know, Samia and Mohammed Mera, also attended the funeral prayers of the disease on Friday afternoon at Mera, KB state. You could imagine how sad it is. They said Sarah reporters had reported on November 6, 2024, that a newly formed jihadist group known as Lakurawa had emerged imposing taxes and levies in communities in Sokoto state and northwest in Nigeria. You could imagine. So how would this country survive? That they are fighting insecurity in all the sectors of our problem in, 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 in most of the regions. In most of the region and some of this insecurity, a lot of people are benefiting from it. They said Sarah reporters, as you said, they were reported to have set up bases in the affected local government areas, moving from community to community and preaching against Western civilization and democratic system of government, similar to the ideology of Boko Haram terrorists. These people are moving around. According to reports, they said they've actually occupied about five local government areas in Sokoto State. You could imagine. Is it that the Sokoto State government and the governors were not aware of probably they did not get this intelligence when these people were started spreading out and all that? Because it is your proactive measure, measure that, that you think that is going to stop insecurity. Look at other developments. They don't play with insecurity. They don't politicize it. What they do is to tackle it head on. What they do is to tackle it head on. You could imagine how will a nation like Nigeria survive? Like I've said, everybody knows what and who is causing this insecurity. Like a former president said that if you want insecurity to end, that any insecurity that persists more than a day, that look where the, that prominent leaders in that particular region are involved in it. And that is basically the truth. That is basically the truth. Every time we'll be hearing a, a, a terrorism a, a financiers and, and, and uh, sponsors, till date, we've not seen any, any of them being you know, imprisoned or prosecuted. No. We, they will tell you we have prosecuted them, but at the end of the day, they will not see any, any of them being imprisoned or probably being uh, uh, sentenced to anything. And when you keep on pampering these uh, sponsors of insecurity, how do you uh, expect insecurity to, to end? That is why a lot of people say, why not deal with this decisively? 
because most of them have benefited from it. Some of them have benefited from this insecurity because at the end of the day, like I said, in this uh, unitary form of government, at the end of the day, the federal government will send money. We take money to go and you know uh, 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 in the northern part of the country and other areas where insecurity is re- is largely affected, and most of them are benefiting from it. We remember what happened. They called it the Dasuki Gate and all that. People were giving money to uh, 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 to buy uh, uh, ammunition and all that. They siphon the money, and a lot of things are happening. And this is what is actually you know making this insecurity to persist in the country. Now a new terrorist group. Now you are fighting Boko Haram. You are fighting this new uh, group. They said is uh, Lakurawa. Like I've said, if any insecurity, this is what a former president Obasan just said, any insecurity that persists more than a day or 24 hours, be careful and look where you see that the hands of some political leaders within that vicinity are involved in this. Let, me, let, let us look at the comments of some people with respect to this insecurity and uh, this news. You know, some people started commenting and all, and all that. So th- th- this person said, our leaders failed us. One thing they can, this is not an, uh, our leaders failed us. One thing they can only do for decades is loot- looting, but lives and properties they can't secure. This person said that the northern leaders have failed them. That one thing they are good at is looting. Look at Yabelo, 80 billion, and other leaders in the northern part of the country. This people, this person is saying that the northern leaders have failed them. This other person says something. Say, as a Nigerian, just try and protect yourself because government will not come to your rescue when this when she hits the roof. This other person said, instead of APC government to focus on focus and solve insecurity in the north. Rather, they focus on 2007 elections. People are saying that most of them are even focusing on winning election than tackling this insecurity. Wait, wait, these people should... This other person said, though I'm not a Tinibu fan, but the North should understand that Tinibu is not Jonathan. They can't succeed with this format. You know, people are trying to bring, you know, conspiracy theories that, that Tinibu, that this might be a plot or, or a plot to, you know, remove Tinibu or destabilize Tinibu's government and all that by some political leaders in the Northern part of the country. But we don't know. What I have often said is that, that insecurity must be dealt with decisively as a region. Because when you know that nobody is coming to help you, because the, like if these conspiracy theories are true, probably when because some people are using even some politicians in the northern part of country have said it that people use terrorism as a matter of fact to usurp or probably to 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 witch hunt a particular government or public government officials and all that. And if it is true, you, you could see that we need to return back to regional government because when you know that you're alone, if you cause harm or have work to your region, it will only affect your region. You see that some of these criminal politicians that are sponsoring terrorism and insecurity in the northern part of the country will stop because they will know that nobody is coming to help them. No money from anywhere is coming to help you. No all your money or federal allocation. That is why I said let us return back to regional government. A lot of people will sit up because we know that no money is coming to your region because of the what insecurity that some of them in, in, intentionally caused or probably created in their region. I can boldly and literally tell you this for free. I can boldly and literally tell you this for free. Well, we don't support insecurity, like I've often said. Every terrorism or power act of terrorism should actually be tackled head on. But the sponsors of it, because we are certain and we know that there are some people sponsoring these criminals in the northern part of the country by creating some sects and some of these, you know, uh, jihadist groups. And most of them are being funded heavily by some of these uh, uh, criminal politicians in the northern area. They go, the federal government should go after these people and apprehend them. But I'll keep on lamenting that we must return back to the regional form of government because there are some... These people sponsoring insecurity in the northern part of the country are benefiting from it. They are, in fact, they are full beneficiaries of whatever that is actually happening in the northern part of the country. I can boldly and literally tell you this, honestly speaking. Well, that's that for that. Let me play a brief video of... Uh, uh, Alin Dume, you know, he, when he was asked, remember that some of the some of these our northern leaders have been speaking against this regional government. You know, when Alin Dume was asked uh, 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 what he thinks about the tax reform bill that Balami Tinibu sent to the House of Assembly about you know sixty percent derivative that states would enjoy sixty percent of whatever value added tax that they derive and generate in their state. Look at what Alin Dume said. Let me play the video. He- the, the the northern governors and um, uh, and. The National Economic Council has said that that we should uh, withdraw, the President should withdraw the bill. He should do more consultation and he should carry Nigerians and the public. But if it goes on like that, I can tell you that it should, that it will be dead on arrival. Why do you think so? And uh, let have me you been able to that. study the, the bills? Have you been able to that's look at it carefully? We don't. We don't need to study the bill. Uh, from what Matthew said now, 
we don't, I don't, or I don't need to be educated. The, the, the general... So from what Alindume said, you could see what a Northern Senator is saying that is in the House of Assembly, that he didn't bother to go through the tax reform bill that will allow me to send that will make states to enjoy 60% of, uh, of this. But because the Northern governors have told them uh, who are their counterparts in the National Assembly to reject the bill outrightly, he's actually rejecting the bill. He even had the effrontery to say that the bill is dead on arrival. You could see the kind of senators that the Northerners have, the kind of leaders they have. Well, I would like you guys to drop your comment in the comment section. Tell me what you think about these political happiness issues and controversies in the country.